last week I got a uh, an email from my friend David Mainz. David, uh, you may have seen in some of the videos, you may remember, he's a nutritionist. His um, career, he's a public speaker and his entire focus is heart attack and stroke prevention. Um, it, it was The email was on planning for the Orlando event, but he sent me this picture of USA Today, January 31st. 2019. The headline is, study, half of Americans have heart disease. And let's go into a little bit more detail on it. Nearly half of adults in the USA deal with some form of cardiovascular disease. A new study says, it was driven largely by changes in guidelines for classifying high blood pressure. Um, According to this study from the American Heart Association, 121.5 million Americans, or about 48.5%, dealt with heart attack or stroke, or heart attack or blood vessel disease as of 2016. The study says deaths from cardiovascular disease rose from more than 836,000 in 2015 to 840,000 in 2016. So, <clears throat> The rise in Americans with heart disease is much higher than the 92.1 million reported in 2014. The key reason is changes in guidelines on measuring high blood pressure and on treating high blood pressure. So in 2017, the JNC7, the JNC, Joint National Commission, it's a group that um, met, it's the standards committee for treating high blood pressure. Here's what they did. Before, the, the most recent prior to November of 2017 was 2003. At that point, they said, don't treat high blood pressure until it's 140 over 90. J, uh, the most recent JNC, uh, in their announcement of November of 2017, said, no, we need to start treating it at 130 over 80. So the people in between... Uh, it had basically been, um, uh, so for example, 135 over 85, that was classified as pre-hypertension before. Now, why did they make that change? Well, here's where I have to be careful that I don't start devolving into a rant. Uh, two rants. Number one, the fact that it took so long to make these changes, and number two, uh, very much related to it, we knew that people in that category were at twice the risk for heart attack and stroke. Yet, we continue to tell docs, no, you don't need to treat it. And the evidence is really clear. So, <clears throat> as you may guess, myself and a whole lot of docs that I know and have worked with started treating at 130 over 80. Uh, years ago. Um, again, and we've talked about this, it takes a long time sometimes for standards committees to act, to react, to catch up with reality. Uh, so, uh, some more things about the, uh, the article. When cases of high blood pressure are removed, the prevalence of cardiovascular disease among Americans is 9% or 24.3 million. So, as you can see, what? 30, 39, 40% of, of this half of Americans have heart disease. The vast majority of it, three quarters of that half, is um, just high blood pressure. Well, when I say just high blood pressure, again, high blood pressure is critical as a risk factor for heart attack and stroke. And here's the other thing that this alerted me to. I've got a heart attack and stroke channel, uh, prevention channel, and I don't have a lot of videos on high blood pressure. So we're going to have to start doing some, uh, we're going to dig into some details on this over the next, uh, next few weeks. <clears throat> now, I did go to find the, uh, this on the actual website, or, or on the web for the, uh, the USA Today, and as you can see, too, I had too many... Um, it was death by pop-ups. I couldn't get anything done. So I went back 
That's why I used the, uh, the picture from David. The one thing I did get from this, uh, this web view was, again, verification January 31st, 2019, USA Today. Now, <clears throat> uh, real quick, well, this is from Harvard Health, and they're saying they're setting out another clarification, trying to put it here so we uh, can understand clearly um, what's going on. High blood pressure, 140 over. I, I'm going to jump. Well, okay, let me, let, let's do the, the, the numbers. Normal is a systolic of less than 120 and a diastolic of less than 80. Elevated is 120 to 129 and uh, less than 80. High blood pressure is 130 to 139 or 80 to 89. And then uh, stage two is 140 or higher and 90 or higher. So in the past, a major component, a way, or see, a way of seeing the change was that this last JNC, this last standards committee, impacted that orange uh, category in the middle. Prior to um, this most recent change in November of 2017, they were not recommending treatment for these folks. Uh, again, there was plenty of data indicating that these folks in this orange category uh, were at double the risk from, the, from those in the green, but yet we were not treating them. Uh, I was, again, as I said before, many docs I know and work with were treating as well. But that's what, uh, once they dropped that orange category from um, the, a classification of prehypertension doesn't need treatment yet to hypertension, that's when you got that big bump in the, num quote, number of people with heart disease. So <clears throat> let's talk about some of the specific changes uh, now that we're starting to get into um, the changes from, uh, from the last, uh, last standards committee. High blood pressure should be, uh, this is, by the way, this is from the American College of Cardiology. Um, it was November 13th, 2017. This was their, uh, the journals, Journal of American College of Cardiology, affectionately known as JAC. J-A-C-C. This was the journal's um, announcement of uh, this change when it happened. High blood pressure should be treated earlier with lifestyle changes and in some patients with medication at 130 over 80 uh, rather than 140 over 90 based on new ACC and AHA uh, guidelines. The new guidelines are the first comprehensive set since 2003 lower the definition of high blood pressure to account for complications that occur at lower numbers and uh, to allow for earlier intervention. Again, <clears throat> as you may have guessed, I'm a big fan of earlier intervention. The new definition will result in uh, nearly half of the U.S. adult population, 46%. Well, the estimate was good, but uh, it was a little bit low. It was actually 48% having high blood pressure with the greatest impact uh, expected among younger people. So again, what's happened is a lot of us have been treating, uh, where you see that, that quote, that old pre-hypertensive category was more in the 40, 50 year olds. And um, so you saw some of us treating those folks uh, a lot earlier. Additionally, the prevalence of high blood pressure is expected to triple under men age, um, among men under age 45, double among women under age 45, um, and only a small increase in um, the actual total number of adults getting hyper antihypertensive medication. I think it was more than a small increase. Um, one thing I'm not able to do is, oh, wait a minute, maybe I can. No, I can't. Uh, just below this, the large pink arrow, arrow here is an acknowledgement by Paul K. Welton, MB, MD, MSC, FACC. He's a cardiologist. He's involved with the uh, American Heart Association and this guidelines committee. I think he may have chaired it. I think he did. Paul Welton was the chair, W-H-E-L-T-O-N, if you're interested. You've already doubled your risk of cardiovascular complications compared to those with a normal 
le level of blood pressure. We want to be straight with people. If you already have a doubling of risk, you need to know about it. It doesn't mean you need medication, but it's a yellow light that you need to be lowering your blood pressure, mainly with non-drug approaches. And again, I would mostly agree with Dr. Welton's comments. I would clearly agree with uh, what he did with that committee in the JNC and getting that change made. My major point is, gosh, it just took way too long. Um, <clears throat> what do I do? People often ask that question. <coughs> Pardon the ugly uh, images here, but I'm fastidious about my blood pressure. Um, I, it, despite the fact that I obviously, uh, my BMI tends to, I tend to keep my BMI uh, 21, 22, 23. Um, I have high blood pressure. I've had it for, hmm, I'm 62. I've had it for about seven years. And uh, high blood pressure is often the first thing that we see in terms of that whole process of um, chronic disease. And there's a lot of um, perspective that that high blood pressure may actually be caused by AGE, not, and not aging, getting old, of course that's true, but advanced uh, glycation end products. Um, one of the most well-known advanced glycation end product is hemoglobin A1C. In other words, glucose, when there's too much of it in the bloodstream, tends to bind covalently to proteins in the body. Well, those things do appear maybe to start clogging up the filters of the kidney. And when and if they do that, the filter uh, sensors tell the body, look, increase the blood pressure because we're not getting enough uh, blood and, and fluid through the filter. Pardon the, the digression. I went there because it's interesting, and I do think a lot of people uh, would be um, are interested in that as well. Now, <clears throat> so that's... Uh, a leading theory on why um, high blood pressure tends to be the first component of metabolic syndrome that we see. Let me just uh, make another comment from a global perspective while you're looking at this blurred up ugly image of my um, uh, blood pressure uh, cuffs and readings from today, by the way. Um, just to go back and, and uh, get 50,000 feet, you remember the headline on this article was half of Americans have high blood pressure or have heart disease. Uh, do you think there might be a correlation with the UCLA study that we quote a lot, which says um, half of Americans have uh, either uh, insulin resistance or full-blown diabetes? There's a major correlation with that. Now, uh, just a couple of other points. I've showed you, uh, again, uh, a long time, this ugly image here, or, or blurry image. I do actually use uh, two blood pressure cuffs. One of them is Omron, which you can't see very well, this one, and the other one is a lot fancy. Uh, both of them I got off of Amazon. The new automated blood pressure cuffs are, they do have significant variation, but, you know, the issue is so does uh, human um, reading, and I believe blood pressure itself does vary quite a bit. So <clears throat> I've got two to try to decrease, to decrease or see a pattern um, between correlation on the two, um, and I've recently had to add my second blood pressure medicine. As you know, if you've seen my other videos, I've been taking Ramipril for a long time, uh, several years, um, and just this week I needed to add um, amlodipine or Norvasc. Again, I'm going on too long. Thank you very much for your interest if you're still here.